want to make changes uh, to help with the challenges that CMAC see in the housing. That's a big part of our job being our national housing uh, agency. Trudy asked me to come and talk about some of the challenges and needs that we see that CMAC sees. So I'm just going to touch on that quickly um, just to kind of give you a highlight of what we see. I guess the number one is the aging population. There's been a couple of references to that. There's no secret uh, that this is already started and it's only going to get greater. I, I just like this graphic. I've seen many graphics with bars and stuff, but this just kind of shows how, you know, the blue part as, as we get older is getting higher. As you can see right now, it's over the 50 to 54, 55 to 69, or to 59 is basically the peak of the percentage of the population right now so obviously that's going to move forward and you can see a really big uh, increase in between the blue and the red the red being 2038 over the ages of 80 to 85 uh, 75 to 80 and that's really significant because what we see uh, in our lives when we get to that point are we're going to see an increase of disabilities we're going to see an increase of needs that are the housing is going to have to address so this is coming we know it and we need to have enough housing to to support this problem that's coming there's no secret about that um, <clears throat> we also know from surveys and this is an american one but we've done canadian ones as well but i just found this this is very simple we people wish to age in place they wish to stay in their home and as they get older i mean as we're younger we tend to want to move around maybe we haven't found the perfect spot yet but as we get older we're more settled and it, over the age of 75 it's like 95 percent of the people over the age of 75 would like to stay in their home unfortunately the reality to that and i see it with my parents now they're not going to be able to stay in their home they love a century home it's well now i guess it's a century and a half it was a century when i was born uh, but it's a farmhouse and there's no way that they're going to, going to be able to live their golden years i call it uh, in that home so they're I don't know who's going to break that news to my mother. It's not going to be. It's not going to be me. Uh, but they're going to. They're going to have to move at some point. Unfortunately, that was what we used to build. That was what we used to do. It doesn't mean we need to continue to do that, right? The other uh, thing that increases with age, and this, I, I, I like to remind people uh, when it comes to the challenges that we have. Mobility is an issue, but that's not the only one. We need to, as builders and developers. Think of all the needs and uh, challenges that are going to challenge us as we get older. And it's going to be cognitive, it's going to be visual, we're going to lose our sight, we're going to lose our strength and our dexterity. So having housing that's more friendly to us means friendlier designs like visitable, but there's other ones too. I'm going to highlight a little bit later uh, universal design, which is designed for everybody. Uh, even children to to elderly. So as we get older, one in right now, one in uh, one in thirteen people over the age of sixty five will experience uh, dementia, and that increases to one in three over the age of eighty five. And I showed you the map of the amount of Canadians that are going to be over the age of twenty five in twenty years. So I've seen stats on the news on TV. Dementia is going to double within the next like ten to twenty years. Uh, and there's there's ways to how to bet to to assist with housing people with dementia. There's little things that we can do in our houses to assist with keeping people in the home as long as possible, even even with early stages of dementia. The other challenge we're talking about challenges. So the, you know, I think our first challenge is the aging population and the challenges that that's bringing. The second one is is affordable housing, and this is a challenge that we face right today. And I, I haven't had a chance to see the details of the budget yesterday, but I do know that our current government was talking a lot about addressing affordable housing. I don't know what came out of it yet, but we do know we've been watching, we're ready. We do know that this is a concern today. What I'm showing you here are households that are in severe housing need, severe housing need. That's not, that's, that's worse than core housing need. Severe is more than 50% of their salary has to go towards their shelter costs. As you can see, recent immigrants and households are what is topping the charts uh, in that area. And you do probably have seen the news that our current government is very uh, committed to bringing in more and more new Canadians. This is something that is that is going, it's, it's, a, it's here, it's what you say, we're back, we're trying to show the world that Canada is committed to, to the, helping the refugees. This does create a housing challenge. As CMHC, we know, we know that this will create a housing challenge, and affordable housing and proper housing goes along with that. So we do have uh, information at CMHC to assist with uh, 
new uh, newcomers to Canada. We call we have an, uh, an entire section called Newcomers to Canada. Welcome to Canada. Uh, it does provide a lot of information for consumers on how to because thinking new new Canadians to Canada, they they don't know the housing system, they don't know the financial system, they probably don't even know how to go take out a bank uh, to get a uh, loan. Uh, they may not know the details of renting, so we have some information on that. And we also have our information available in eight different languages. Um, for I'm just showing you this in case you happen to be someone that's dealing with, with new Canadians and speaking in different languages. But this leads me to, to where I wanted to talk mostly about, and that is the information that we have for builders, developers, architects, students, uh, consumers, is mostly written around the concept of universal design. Universal design is built from seven principles, and these are the principles, and they're very short, and they're very, uh, uh, there's a little bit of a mistake there, it's tolerance fair. They're very short, uh, simple concepts, but it's the stuff that, that we need to see in housing that makes housing user-friendly for everybody, and it, like low physical effort and equitable use and simple and intuitive and flexible and adaptable. These are all the things that universal design is about. This is a quote from one of the uh, from the visionary of universal design, and I like this quote because basically this is what it's all about. It's about making uh, everyone. Uh, it's about. It's not just about housing. It's not just about the built environment. It's about communication. It's about products. It's about all products. I use I use the example of universal design a lot when it comes to working with appliances and working with uh, products like smart TVs. Anyone had trouble trying to turn on a smart TV or get to the right channel? You think the TV is smarter than you? That's not simple and intuitive. Uh, I've got into troubles with that looking after my nieces and nephews in going into somebody else's house and we're trying to use the microwave and it's one of those complex ones and we don't even know how to turn it on for a minute. Like it's just not simple and intuitive. So universal design needs to be applied to, to everything in, in life and it's, it's, it really benefits people of all ages and, and uh, Alan and Trudy have been talking about that as well. I just want to show you some pictures of examples of universal design in the form of creating um, level entrance ways, which is probably, in talking to builders, when we talk about universal design and we talk about visitable, they'll say that the level entrance ways are one of their biggest challenges. It, it, it isn't if it's thought out, Alan mentioned it and he was banging on, when you start out from scratch, from the start, you don't have the same challenges. Uh, this slide I used for students, we talk to students as much as we can because we're really trying to, um, that, that, was, that, that unit there I wanted to mention is slab on grade. We talked about basements today. That's near Oakville, that project. That's a non-profit housing project for seniors. It's slab on grade. You can walk around that entire project and never have to take a step. It, the entire thing is flat. Now when I say flat, it's not flat, it's graded properly for Water sloping, but I'm just what we show the students there. When you use universal, when you use level entrance ways, you need to protect the entrance way. That's one of the messages there. Slab on green. The other one is a single family home. We like to check. We like to show the students of our architectural design students these ideas because they're the ones in the future that are going. When I showed you the concepts of universal design, you'll notice they're just concepts. It doesn't tell you how to achieve those concepts. That's left up to the imagination of the designers and the architects and the engineers. And if you plant these ideas early, they're going to come up with some really creative stuff in the future on how to do this. Because we, we, when we talk today to build, I, I used to be, when I started out at a school, I was working for a builder. Um, we're, we're programmed a certain way because of the gray hair. We're programmed a certain way. You start programming kids from the start to think about this stuff, you can just imagine what maybe they're going to come up with these simple ideas in order to, to do these concepts. And I'm sure someday they'll sit back and, and you know, we, we, I laugh, I, I'm a little bit of an energy guy. <clears throat> so when I look at old houses, I laugh at them. I think, you know, what were the builders thinking when they built houses and put in single pane windows? Can you imagine the first time someone said, hey, let's do a double pane window? I bet you the first thing that came out of their mouth was, that's too costly, we can't do that. Now today, that's, we're talking triple pane windows. First time you talk about triple pane windows, that's too costly, we can't do that. It's always the first step. But once you, it becomes part of the fabric, the cost goes away. And that's the same type of concept that we're going to see with this type of thing. And that third one is in London, Ontario. It's a new development. It's affordable, affordable housing development. John Nicholson is the architect, the one in red. 
all these have in common to the students, they all had level entrance ways. But what I like about them is what I call an invisible convenience. And what I mean by invisible convenience, there's a convenience there that doesn't really jump out at you. Uh, it's just there in the fabric and you don't notice it. I wanted to show, this is, this is uh, a couple of pictures. We are developing some new material with an architect from Edmonton on visitable, on accessible, on flexible, and all this new material will be coming out this year. And it's written for builders and developers that want to try to accomplish this to give them some ideas. These are some of the pictures. What we're showing here, that is a visible house, even though there's stairs at the front. Lots of people like to see stairs. But the visible side comes at the side of the house. There's a side entrance to that. On the other uh, project house, there's a, a rear laneway, and the, visit, the visible comes, and Alan showed that too, comes from the back of the house. So it doesn't, there's so many different ways, I'm just trying to say there's so many different ways to uh, achieve this. If we can do it from the get-go, from the start, from planning a new community, planning a new neighborhood, before you even decide where the infrastructure goes, where the sewers are gonna go, where the, where the curbs and the streets and the sidewalks are gonna go, you think about all the design, you work it into the landscape, and, and it's very easy to do. This is, uh, this is what I called a visible convenience. It's there, it's, everyone sees it. This is what we see today because this street was built, I don't know, maybe in the 70s. We didn't think of this stuff then. Now when we have to do, because we still, we still see people, the disabilities are rising, it's going to rise, so we still have to get in and out of these houses or build other houses that people you know, can live in, but we know that people want to age in place. This is what ends up happening. And I hear stories from people that talk to me about this and they say, Jamie, you know, we don't want to put ramps on our house because they're ugly and they, they, they devalue my house. And it's pictures like this that, 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 that does happen. But unfortunately, this is what ends up happening when we don't build in the beginning. And to be fair, 1970s, when I was in the 80s, maybe it was almost 90, I'm not that old. Uh, I think I got out of school in the uh, mid 80s. I worked for a custom home builder and that home builder built very expensive homes in the London area and one of our big features I remember was a sunken living room. That's what everybody wanted, a sunken living room. I bet you, if you think about that today, that's the worst design concept ever. Um, and one of the worst things they tell people you can do another inconvenient or visible, I mean a, vis a visible convenience instead of an invisible convenience. One of the worst things you can do is build one step. Uh, I'd rather see 10 steps than one step because one step, chances are you're not going to see that step and it could cause a, a serious injury as we're older. The, the, the challenge with the aging population, we're trying to prevent falls. We don't want falls in the house. They happen on stairs, they happen in bathrooms, we're doing some really good research, and when I say we, it's not CMAC, but we're helping support it, at University of Toronto for bathrooms, uh, tub showers, grab bars, that type of thing. So there's a lot of research being done on this uh, currently. Lastly, I wanna highlight the Housing Observer. Uh, the Housing Observer has got, it used to be a book, it's now gone online. Anybody wants to sign up for this, uh, I will take their business card and I'll sign you up. But it's, uh, it's probably our flagship uh, resource that we promote to people because you can go there and capture everything. If you want data, you can, you can go there to find data. We can direct it direction to data charts. You can go there to get information. I'll just give you an example when you go there online. It's set up like Pinterest now. The pin, pin, I was told Pinterest, I don't actually go on Pinterest, but they're tiles. And uh, there's where you can see the housing market information portal. Anyone familiar with the housing market information portal? It's kind of, if anyone wants data, it's a real cool portal. You can go in and you can search by community. So you can search by the city of Kitchener, the city of Waterloo. You can search, again, housing starts, but if you're interested in that. But you can go into housing conditions. It'll tell you housing, houses that have been identified in core need. It's based on the census. It's based on. Uh, the census information and the most current census information we have in there right now is 2011 but it's in there um, you can search houses by if they're in need of repair and now this is this is people on census checking off a box that they feel their houses need a repair so keep that in mind but it, one of the ones that we find important are the primary caregiver of the house the age of them so you can see and the age of the housing stock so you can tell in an area if the housing stock 
is very old or very new. And so anyway, there's all kinds of data in there. Uh, Mid-rise construction, these are just what was there the day I took the snapshot, and there's, there's actually the tile on newcomers again. But there's over 60 to 100 different tiles of, of information that are in there and it changes all the time and you can subscribe to it and when you subscribe to this you can subscribe you can go in and subscribe and say what you're interested in and when something new comes out in that area you'll get an email so um, if you're interested in signing up all i need is a business card and i did just sign up for that this is our uh, information that i'm talking about today that we also have on our website uh, aging in place accessibility adaptable adaptable these are the categories if you were to click on those uh, graphic symbols, then it would take you the information on those different areas. And like I said, everything that's written under, age, under those areas are written to universal design concepts. So lots, we have lots of information to help people get there, build it, renovate it, because we, we are dealing with some, we're dealing with a lot of existing conditions that are not ideal. By the way, it does cost more to renovate after the fact than it does to do it the first time, as I think we're trying to highlight today. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.